Today in this short video, we're going to be talking about the importance of soil testing and how to take appropriate soil tests. Uh, we'll touch on some of the things such as what is the best time of year to obtain these soil tests, how to properly collect them, and we'll also touch on some of the tools which you might utilize. And then after that, we'll talk about how to interpret some of these results uh, for use in determining the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium fertilizer, or other micronutrients that you might need to add to ensure adequate crop growth and adequate crop yield. So first we're gonna to touch on some of the tools which you might need uh, to obtain uh, appropriate soil samples. Uh, as you see here in this footage, uh, I have a container. In this case, it's a five gallon bucket. Uh, any sort of container would work, whatever you might have handy. The one point that I would like to make is it should be a clean container. Uh, make sure there's no soil residue which might impact the results of the soil test you're taking. The other tool that I'm using here in this video is a soil sample probe. It's specifically designed to obtain soil samples. Uh, you can see here this one in particular also has a place for your foot which makes taking the soil samples a little bit easier, pushing that into the ground as necessary and I'm going through and collecting the, the soil uh, cores and placing them in the five gallon bucket as I move through the field. Now I understand uh, not all farmers uh, might have a, a soil probe available. Uh, so if you don't have a soil probe available, you can use a spade or some sort of hand trial. The important thing to take note of is the depth at which you take these soil samples. For most vegetable crops, you're wanting to take a soil sample that's anywhere from six to eight inches in depth uh, through the soil profile. Um, the other thing that we want to talk about is how we obtain these and how we move through the field. So for example, if you have a one acre field which you're trying to sample, uh, at minimum you need to take 10 cores uh, from that field and for larger fields you may take upwards of 30 cores. Uh, for my purposes I generally like to get a good representation of the entire field and that's why you take multiple cores. You can have quite a bit of variability even within a one acre field. Um, so I like to use as you see here in this diagram a Z pattern where I start in one corner of the field moving across one of the short sides and then I move diagonally across the field, the length of it, uh, pulling cores, and then at that point I'll move along the other end. Now what you see here is several cores that I've taken and I've got them in my bucket. The next important step is to make sure that you homogenize this sample. So you're, try you're only going to send in one container for the sample or one bag for the sample. So I want to mix up all samples which I had collected to get a, a, an average, if you will, over the entire area which you're sampling. In this particular case, it was a third of an acre field uh, which we sampled. And so as you homogenize these samples, then you want to prepare them and you want to place them in an appropriate container. Uh, more specifically, you have soil sample bags uh, which you can purchase. If you don't have those available or have trouble sourcing them, your local county extension office should have those available for you and could often assist you in taking soil samples. Often many of your county offices will also have those soil probes uh, available for use as well where your agent may be able to come take that with you. Uh, one other thing that I want to mention um, is the time of the year. Usually the fall is one of the better times to obtain your soil sample. This allows you to also apply lime at the appropriate time uh, as necessary and gives the lime uh, some time to work through the course of the winter following up through the spring before you actually plant the crop. Um, this becomes Im important uh, because the pH of the soil determines the availability of the nutrients for your crop during the growing season. And if you take it consistently around the same time year to year, you can look over the history of that field, how pH has changed or how nutrients have changed and how to better manage that uh, in coming years. So once you've homogenized your sample and you've placed in the appropriate bag, uh, you want to make sure to label that appropriately. There's some information that you need to also provide uh, for the soil testing laboratory. As you see here on this form, we want to know what the previous crop was, uh, including if that was previously in sod or another vegetable crop. Um, and then you want to also provide what the new crop is going to be, which you will be planting in that field. Um, once you send that off and you re receive the soil uh, sample results back, you want to look in your ID 36, the Commercial Vegetable Production Guide, and you want to utilize uh, the recommendations. In this case, we're looking at tomatoes, and so your phosphorus and your potassium recommendations 
uh, to apply to your given area will be dictated by the, the results from your soil test. And so if you look at your soil test results, your phosphorus or potassium will be in the low, medium, or high, or very high range. And based on where those results fall in pounds per acre, that will dictate the amount of phosphorus or the amount of potassium which you should add pre-plant uh, prior to the start of the season. There's a, a couple other things I want to mention, some of the things to avoid when taking soil samples. You want to avoid wet soils and you want to make sure that you use the appropriate bag. You do not want to use plastic as these soil samples need to dry down. And again, as I mentioned earlier, if you don't have bags available, you should be able to source those from your local county extension office.